What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the bottom of the map in the blue color playing as Poseidon. His name is Scotty. His opponent today in the red color playing as Ra. His name is Joe. A little bit of a clan battle here, both the DoD brothers going at it. If you do, uh, if you were around back then, there was this point where I thought, look, these guys play each other every single weekend for a, a whole bunch of games. Let's just do a best of 100 and XXXXX and see who's going to come out in front. Uh, but we never concluded that because Joe went on a hiatus and that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Anyways, onwards and upwards. We'll see what... Oop, that's a bad mining camp. He's going to have to delete that one, right? Yep. Uh, <clears throat> so... We'll see what's going to happen here. We got, we got Joe's Ra here. Not something we get to see all too much of, to be honest. Joe is, uh, while he is an incredibly strong Ra player, oftentimes we see him preferring to play like Isis or Set uh, for what, whatever reasons. Like he, he, he prefers those gods over the Ra, but we do have a, a Ra versus Poseidon, which used to be a very, very, very popular matchup, maybe just because of the fact that Matrius and Chemo were going at it quite a lot in finals where they could pick their main gods so we would see quite a bit of the uh quite a bit of of that that match up there so we'll see what's going to happen in this game joe's already moving over to his second hunt this is relatively correct here one thing i would have liked to have seen him do is shoot this auroch down with all four of those villages then send two over to the gold mine and then the next two villages that come out of the town center would go into food and that would net Joe uh, a little bit of extra gold so that he'd be able to get his monument up and his temple up to be able to get himself a 4.30 advance time if he so chose. Now, we are seeing this uh, Katoskopos being incredibly annoying here. This is something that I, I'm i actually really not a fan of. I feel like the Pharaoh should have some sort of bonus damage against the Katoskopos to prevent this kind of, uh, this kind of abuse. Now, you can use your villagers to shank this, but as you can see, Scott is just going to walk in, walk out, walk in, walk out, keep on harassing this, and he's going to distract the villagers and get extra economic damage done, which, I mean, I just feel like the Pharaoh should be able to defend himself against a, uh, against a two damage uh, scout in the early game, but it's just uh, not, not how it works, unfortunately, as the monument is going to be coming up. Joe in need of a, a couple of extra villages on gold here in order to get himself his uh, his temple out as he's sending all of his villages actually over onto this location. That's a lot of villages moving forward here. So we'll see how that's going to go. Moving over to Scardi's perspective to see what he's doing. He's already used his lure, pulled in a whole bunch of these caribou on this position already over here, eating this food over here, ready to chuck up a temple, I'm sure. Uh, he's going to chuck it up with this villager over here to kind of start creating a little bit of a blockade on this tree line over there. Uh, and it seems like he's going to be advancing at about 4.30 here for a relatively fast second. Town Center ten, tends to be the way to play this matchup. Now, if we take a look at the map, however, and we see what's actually happening here, it, it's a decent map spawn for the Ra, if we're completely honest. He's got double gold mines in his base. One, two. This gold mine's secured by this tower over here. And this location gold mine here has got, uh, has got the tree here defending it. So... If Joe wants to defend both of these locations and prevent any sort of early game harass, he's going to have to wall around here with houses to protect this gold mine. Or alternatively, he can just move over to this gold mine when the uh, the hero comes and this tower will completely protect him with this beautiful wood line over here. So Joe's main base, really, really nice. However, second gold mine wise, these gold mines are relatively off. Uh, they're not really going to be a possibility here for Joe to grab in the uh, in the mid game. He's going to have to go for this gold mine, which is really close to this town center. So if Joe can, he should be thinking about trying to grab this town center here. And you can see him going up through Ptah. I would say this is pretty late here considering how much food was on the map he had an auroch he had all of these caribou here he definitely could have hit a 430 here i am uh nearly 100 percent certain as uh as scardi moves forward with his flagstone of buhan negative 25 percent wall gold cost gonna move in and try and take out that pharaoh there as the uh as the village is gonna come over here and try and start shanking the pharaoh's getting even closer to falling here as he's trying to retreat away they both move well actually the pharaoh moves slightly slower as he's bumping around he does end up losing his life chuck up chuck up some granaries here or, and get some sort of a uh some sort of a blockage here nice play gets the granaries down the theseus gonna start getting shanked down as the theseus attempts to retreat away nice play there by joe as he's gonna have to continue chasing that theseus 
Theseus away. This villager will be able to win that fight here. Just one versus one as the Theseus turns around and will indeed be well, it's attempting to make a break for it here as the villagers get pulled. But Joe going to be pulling back ever so slightly now. He realizes there's going to be a centaur coming for him now as that Theseus is going to sit there with 25 HP. The villagers have to move all the way back home. And now the game changes completely completely here where joe probably should have been able to grab this town center joe is no longer going to be able to so he has to move all the way back into his main base and go for a one town center play here which while it's not bad it's not good either on this type of a map the reason why it's uh it's not necessarily bad is because it's going to allow him to potentially secure this top gold mines over here well but the reason it's it's not good is because there's no real way to punish uh, a poseidon player in the timings that you need to put, be punishing the poseidon player in as we already see the town center coming up over here plenty of food over here for scotty scotty is going to get going really really quickly here and we'll see what joe is going to be able to come up with and he does indeed decide to go for a town center a safe back town center is deciding yeah that's going to be better but Unlike the forward town center, this town center at the back here for Joe gives nothing for Joe's second gold mine situation. So he's going to have to fight really, really hard to get this town center secured. If he can secure this town center, he's going to be completely fine. And I say around about the 15 minute mark, he needs to have this town center secured by. Otherwise, this game is going to be incredibly difficult for Joe to be winning here. So we'll see how things are going to go as the armory is going to start getting dropped. I imagine all of those Shadoof upgrades coming in. There it is. Joe's got his second town center. He's starting to make villages out over here. We have plow coming through. We got husbandry coming through. Plow is going to come through very shortly as well uh, as Joe is continuing to chop down this wood with three villagers, not taking anything off of there. Villagers coming up over onto this gold mine over here. Town center up for Scardi as he is motoring ahead in this game. Villagers pulling off this gold mine for the time being. Going to be moving over into the main base, maybe eating some goats, eating the rest of these caribou. So I haven't seen any second, any any units out for Scardi. I'm always interested in the possibilities here of Poseidon to do things like a two town center fast heroic. Because he's got he's got ceasefire, so all of the time it's gonna kind of be fine to to do that. As we do see him spending his resources on something here, I'm not sure exactly what it was. All of his resources went down. Maybe he's get, oh he's getting a third town center. <gasps> this is this is huge. This town center here. This is the reason I was saying this this town center here is going to be vitally important for Joe to secure going two town centers. Because it secures this gold mine. But with Scotty taking this town center early, what does that mean? It effectively means, well, Joe should be able to get access to this gold mine over here. As we can already see walls starting to come up by Scotty. He's playing this one really, really nicely. Early walls on this position potentially um, throw stables around this large gold mine here. And it's going to make it really, really tough for Joe to secure a gold mine outside of his base. Uh, but grabbing this town center is so smart. We'll see if it's going to be uh, if there's going to be enough food here and enough time for Scotty to get going. Uh, effectively, Joe should be able to hit some sort of a timing here. Joe does have shifting sands. He's throwing down some barracks down. He's getting his armory up. He's going to have a lot of food here. He's throwing actually a second barracks down super early here as that third town center pops there. As if we take a look at Joe's perspective, he does see that that town center has been grabbed. So Spearman's starting to come out for Joe really, really early here. Uh, I, I don't particularly like this. If you're going for a timing, it's really, really important to hit the Heroic Age as fast as you can in order to throw your Siege Works down because the Siege takes the longest to build, right? If you take a, a quick look at what Siege Towers uh, take, it's 22 seconds. So it takes a full minute to build your siege weapons and then also the uh the siege the siege works takes 91 seconds to build so that's a minute and a half if you are empowering it with the pharaoh so say you advance at eight minutes and it takes a minute to build all the things it takes 91 seconds to build the siege works that's like two and a half minutes to actually hit your timing so if you advance at eight minutes that's 10 minutes and 30 seconds is when your timing would hit with three siege towers for example if you if you're delaying yourself all the way back here by getting these spearmen out that's just delaying your siege towers whereas the spearmen they take Take nine seconds there's that doesn't really matter they don't even count as as units to train they're going to train fast enough that you're going to be able to get to 115 130 population while those siege towers are training if you have enough barracks enough resources to actually make them so ordering there matters a little bit if you are going for those timings and every little bit matters here so we'll see what joe's gonna actually end up going for it looks like he's going for some raids with these spearmen early potentially to prevent scardy from getting these walls up but they're already seemingly too late as this wall is going to be coming up over here we do see that these two polar bears are here 
And I feel like Scotty's going to have to clean those up if he wants to deal with anything there. Is look at this. Scotty's only now starting to throw his stables down super late. Nine minutes, 20 seconds into the game. First, Hippocon out. Spearman searching around. They do find the Katoska boss. Most annoying unit in the game. Down. As now the Theseus starting to get taken out. We do see this girdle of Apollo that has been left here by Scotty as... Uh, Scotty going to easily win this fight, actually, with that centaur in the back. Get a couple of spearmen kills. Remember, the Theseus cost only 100 food, 50 gold. So losing that for three, four spearmen here is well worth the trade. As this villager is going to attempt to finish these walls off, the spearman does spot this one here as it's going to be circling around here. The villager can easily stay alive as uh, as uh, it's going to finish off those walls there. And those uh, spearmen are looking to be a little bit trapped here. As Joe now, what is his plan? He's going to be thrown down. A siege works immediately. Double siege works here with a lot of villagers on it at this point. I like this idea. He's got himself only three villages on wood, though. So I'm not sure he's, this second siege uh, siege works is really going to be worth it. Probably worth it more to just move back over onto the wood with those six villages, seven villages there, and get those extra siege towers out. But we'll see if it's going to work. We are seeing the rock moving around. I don't think that Joe should be using Locust in this situation. Now, hear me out here. Locust is a really, really good god power. If Joe was to hit a 20 villager kill Locust, obviously very good. 15 villager, 10 villager kill Locust, obviously very good. However, his opponent right now is on three town centers. So say he only gets a five villager Locust kill. Those villagers are coming back out in 30 seconds-ish. You're only delaying your opponent's economy by 30 seconds. He's already huge in his villager count. So killing off a couple of villagers is not going to really help Joe at this point. What will help Joe is utilizing the Locust on top of his siege towers while he pushes this town center because he vitally needs this location. As Scardi is now able to advance to the next age, he's got tons of resources in the bank. Joe, on the other hand, pumping out those spearmen here. Does he have any upgrades? Yes, he does. He's got the medium spearmen out. Uh, he's still making siege towers. This second siege tower, as I said, not going to have enough wood here to be producing from just yet. One more siege tower coming out. And, and remember what I was saying, this is going to take a while to push. This is going to take a while if you don't advance really fast and get your thing out. So your, siege tower, your siege works out. So we're seeing an 11 minute 20 second attack when I really think this attack should be coming off of two town centers at around about 10 minutes. So it's, a la it's about half a minute late. As the villagers pop out, the locusts will come down onto this location. The villagers will be ducking back into here and there is potentially going to be some sort of a ceasefire coming through here for Scardi as that locust comes down as this is the beauty of playing Poseidon is having that ceasefire. So we'll see what Joe can do now to actually give himself some sort of an advantage. Because right now, what Scardi can do now, he sees the Spearman, is drop a whole bunch of military academies. The curse will be dropped. There are three Patsukos here and a Wadget. So if Joe can position this well, get out a couple more uh, of these military uh, barracks or these barracks here, or go to the Mythic Age now. That's actually the play here normally is to, to hit a Mythic Age behind this ceasefire. And then you can uh, you can class Tornado maybe 30 seconds-ish after the ceasefire hits. Can be a really, really good idea. As the villagers do pop them, uh, they're, they're ready to start attacking these siege towers. Curse will 100% be coming down here. Scarlet's got 99 of 135 population starting to make those of Hasbis now. Four military academies here. Plenty of resources in the bank to spam this out. If Scardi needs needs to he can abandon this for just a little uh, a little bit here as the uh, Atlanta is attempting to come out of this location and the seats and the shifting sands that's a beautiful beautiful shifting sands there by Joe I absolutely love 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 that shifting sands he moves on to the other side taking down a whole bunch of villagers here that's some big Big brain play there by Joe Town Center down. Incredibly smart. The uh, the villagers getting taken down. The army having to move over here. A lot of villagers do get kept alive on this position, however. And what is Joe's next plan? Osiris here behind all of this. He's moving forward. He's going to drop a Migdol stronghold on this position and start thinking about making himself some camelry or some chariot archers to move forward. Plenty of wood in the bank. He's going to have himself... Son of Osiris to hold for a little bit. However, the army here of uh, of Scardi, very strong with heavy hoplites, heavy hypaspists. These siege towers still going after houses here against Poseidon. I actually don't think this is the best use of your time with the siege towers because they're going to get picked off by those militia. But with the help of the rock there, that is a great way to circumvent those militia there. Nice play as uh, as the army now turning around onto this one to take a little bit of a fight. I think this is probably a bit of a mistake as the uh, Atlanta is going to come in, clean up the Patsukos, the Spearman now moving over here as Joe has managed to set up his Migdol stronghold 
hold over here, ready to start making some chariot arches. We do see the Pharaoh going after that Nemean Lion here now as Skadi is going to be retreating away. The Nemean Lion is going to be uh, dropping there as the villagers move over onto this gold mine. Joe going to be able to potentially move in and grab this town center on this position over here. He gets access to all the gold mines at the top side of the map and Skadi gets his third town center back in that position over there, though he is a little bit behind on the resources. He does need to think about getting himself uh, irrigation now as well as we do see the Son of Osiris coming in. The mummy immediately getting targeted down. The Son of Osiris has to retreat ever so slightly as more chariot arches are coming out for Joe. He's sitting at 129 of 130 population. We do see the settlement coming up here. The siege towers are continually going to get dropped onto this position as Joe's got himself three population in the in the siege tower. So 12 population of siege towers plus the rock, which is sitting at three population. So 15 population there. Uh, uh, preventing that town center. So it's technically a net positive for him, but this fight over here is looking like a plus 20 population or plus 15 population for Scardi. So Scardi should be able to be winning these fights unless that son of Osiris can do something a little bit better. One better, one thing that Joe could do is leave one siege tower over there in the rock and be completely fine uh, as the... Uh, as the son of Osiris uh, retreating back ever so slightly. I think there's a world here where instead of going into chariot arches here, uh, Scotty could have, sorry, Joe could have gone for Axeman. And he is now starting to think that that's a possibility. He's got so many villages on wood though, which is definitely a uh, kind of an Egyptian trait. You kind of forget that you don't need wood unless you're really, really spamming chariot arches hard. Uh, but Joe's got plenty of wood here. Now, we'll see if he's going to make any attempt at targeting down this location over here. Now, if you think about this this, uh, this, this location here, take a look at Joe's... Oh, sorry, not Joe's perspective. Scardi's perspective. If you set up a wall here and you start catapult sieging this town center, it's going to be really, really tough for Scardi to push in onto that one. But Scardi's now got four town centers. He's stuck in the heroic age, but he's got four town centers. We see another Migdal stronghold coming up over here. Joe's going to be at... Should be at 140 or 140 population, but he's missing his fortified town centers at this point. Son of a side is still alive. Axemen are out and they should start seeing their upgrades coming through. As we now have a ton of these Hippocon coming out and... Honestly, I'm scared for Joe. We will be seeing that Migdol stronghold coming up, so Joe should be able to garrison into that Migdol, pull around the back, get a lot of damage done on the back over here. We see the Spearman finishing up that wooden wall over here. I'm not sure exactly what happened to those siege towers. I know exactly what happened to those siege towers. They're just hanging in that rock. I mean, another option could be to just drop the rock over here and start sieging that, that town center down. I mean, there's villagers over there, but it might be enough to finish that one off while the Son of Osiris plus the help of the Migdol stronghold might be enough to hold on to here, but uh, with the Son of Osiris continuously getting targeted down over here, I feel like Skadi is going to make ground on this position as he's going to be able to continue pushing through here. And not only that, I imagine Skadi is going to have the resources. Yes, he's getting Spirited Charge, and he will be able to get himself Heavy Cavalry as well uh, whenever he wants to at this point, which means that those Medium Hippocon or Heavy Hippocon to be will be really, really tough to deal with uh, in the future here for Joe, as we'll see how he's going to go moving forward. Joe's got plenty of resources in the bank right now as we do see the Siege weapons dropping onto this position villages getting pulled out over here the rock getting pushed back there is no uh, hero archer here on this position with the help of the fortified town center that's going to be able to be kept alive for quite some time the rock does pick up that son of osiris as the hippocon pulling over onto this position all of those siege weapons are getting taken down we don't see any siege works on this top location here for joe but he is still managing to find his way forward in this game the hippocon do manage to get in here and get a bit of a surround there onto that son of osiris will it be enough here as the son of osiris does manage to sneak out of that position, gets back into the Migdal Stronghold, keeps himself alive. Thank you for the three months, Nick Tap. Appreciate you, my friend. Thank you so much. As now we see, Heavy Hippocon have come through for Scardi. Scardi sitting at 160 of 180 population, low on the resource count. He's starting his trade route as well to get himself a little bit more economy to keep this pressure going. At this point, it's like Spearman and Chariot Archers here for Joe as he's trying his best here to keep himself alive. As the Hippocon do manage to sneak around there onto that son of Osiris. Joe not paying attention and the son of Osiris is down. And that's going to be a real big loss there for Joe moving forward. Joe's at 133 of 140 population. He's trying to raid over here on this position. We do see some barracks coming through, some siege weapons coming out of this uh, siege works here. 
to potentially try and sneak down this location over here. Uh, potentially, Joe could swap the battlefields here, allow this Migdol down, allow this Migdol down, and all in this position over here to try and get that town center back. But given that all the gold mines are over here, he really can't be giving this location up just yet. As Champion Spearman coming through, Joe's a little bit panicking here. He's starting to make unupgraded camelry here. He's got himself a uh, copper mail at this point, which will help him. He needs to get through a uh, like copper mail, bronze mail, iron mail against these Hippocon at this point to have a little bit of an advantage. We are seeing these chariot archers trying to chase down the villagers as the Hippocon going to be chasing those down. That's a whole uh, point. 0.55 speed greater Hippocon than those Chariot Archers, so he should be able to easily chase those down. As we see, two Siege Towers in both of those Siege Works. Joe's going to have to send those forward at some point right now because he is getting pushed back so hard on this position here. We'll see how he's going to go, if he's going to be able to hold it as a Siege Works coming up over here. Spearman trying to get produced on that location. Joe's still got plenty of resources in the back, finally getting himself that Bronze Mail through here. He still doesn't have his upgrade for the Heavy cam Camel region yet to help him out against those Hippocon here, but the, the Spearmen, they're just trickling out at this point. He's not getting enough units through as the Siege Tower is starting to roll in. We've got ourselves seven Siege Towers coming in onto this position. What is Scouty's reaction going to be like? He's only just going to be able to have seen them as the Siege Tower is popping in. One Siege Tower attacking. It's a really, really narrow choke point here. Uh, Joe is not microing this at all as his Siege Towers are going as long of a route as possible as more villagers getting pulled out over here as the Siege Towers continue to roll in. The Siege Towers have been prevented on that location over here as three Siege Towers have made their way onto the Town Center. We'll see if any more can make it through as the Town Center getting closer and closer to falling as units are piling through in onto this position, taking down the villages of Joe, making his economy incredibly weak. The Siege Towers have been thwarted here. Just imagine if these were catapult there. Instead of Siege Towers, the villages would not have been able to stop the catapult from killing this Town Center. I don't know why Joe decided to go Siege Towers here. There's run out of resources though for Scotty. He's got no food here to rebuild this town center. We see some spearmen coming through, but the Hapaspas come in and the siege to ours all fall. The town center stays alive and Scotty has got a significant advantage moving forward in this game. Joe here, he's trying to hold on up on this location. He's able to hold for a little bit longer over here, sitting at 113, 120 of 140 population, but no resources really in the bank right now as Scotty is motoring ahead. He's got plenty of gold in the bank. He's a little bit low on the food, but I imagine most of that is because he's trying to make pure food units with 33 villages on uh, on food at this point. He's making donkey caravans as well. He, he could arguably go up to 40 villages on food at this point and not and still not have enough here. As uh, as the Hippocon going to be retreating back, we've got all of these Hapaspas coming through. In in reality, the best army composition against a Hapaspas Hippocon is going to be those. Osiris Camelry with the upgrade. Um, what's it called? Desert Winds. Uh, but it's so expensive to get there. Joe does have the favor to get that upgrade, but he doesn't have the resources all the time, really, to get it out because he's only got one Migdol up. So he has to go these Spearmen, which aren't really going to be working. He's trying to make Chariot Archers to deal with the Hapaspas, but they just don't do enough damage, and those Spearmen are just going to get absolutely carved up here by those Hapaspas. And not only that, we've already got Bronze Shields through Viscardi. He's in a fantastic position moving forward here. Joe, I'm not sure what he can do. I think that if he does decide to make this push and again, just make catapults here and then target the town center down. Scotty's going to get that town center back up to full HP here with those villagers repairing it. He's drawn down some stables nice and far forward so we can see that happening as a wall also comes down for Scotty to make sure that he doesn't fall uh, there anytime soon here. As some catapults are coming out onto this position, there is a world where, again, some sort of a wall over here pushing through on this spot here to take this town center would have been a possibility as well for Joe, but he just didn't take any uh, real initiative there to secure that location. And now Joe's Migdol is going to be falling. And with pure Spearman here, it's just not going to be working out for Joe here. I'm not sure what else he can do in this situation. And he does decide to tap out in this game. I absolutely loved Joe's idea with attacking this location and then shifting Sanzing onto the other town center and taking this down. But after that, Joe did not follow that up well at all. He had four siege towers in this town, in this rock, with the rock, that's 15 population here. You only needed to have three population rock 
plus three population siege tower to keep this town center from going back up. And the rest could have been in spearmen, could have been in cavalry. Instead of going for chariot archers here, probably could have gone straight in with cavalry because your opponent, I mean, there were hoplites there. So maybe the chariot archers with a little bit of chariot archer and then straight into cavalry spearmen and having a really good time with that instead of getting your chariot, heavy Thank chariot you. archer upgrade, get heavy cavalry upgrade and maybe go something like 40 villages on food against this type of composition may have allowed him to push forward and win that at some point. Uh, obviously, securing this town center was everything here for Joe, and he didn't really manage to get villagers forward to drop those Migdols. Instead, he put the Migdols Thank over you. here. I feel like if he was a little bit more aggressive with those, he might have been able to prevent the town center as well without even using the rock and the siege tower there. Anyways, a fantastic game here by Scardi. Uh, a really, really interesting thing to, to note is... Uh, grabbing this forward town center here is absolutely suicide if the Joe uh, Ra had a, a decent build order. I mean, the other, well, I mean, I take that all back. If Joe had a really decent build order here, he actually would have been able to advance at 4.30, grab this food, and be grabbing this town center before any of that early game shenanigans happened. Probably wouldn't have lost his Pharaoh either because the Pharaoh would have been able to get to full damage and be able to fight back against that Theseus and being able to get this town center up no problem. And then it would have been a really, really different game. I would have been interested to see how it would have gone if Joe had put everything into grabbing this gold mine here and Scardi grabs the entire top of the map. Not sure exactly how that would be, but anyways, if you guys enjoyed this game, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTubes, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next game.